What is up, people? DevSage here, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you about the iterator design pattern. So the iterator pattern allows you to effectively loop over some collection of objects. You know, it's a it's a common programming task to traverse and manipulate a collection of objects. These collections may be stored as arrays or maybe something more complex like a tree or a graph. And in addition to being able to traverse these collections, you may need to access the items in the collection in a certain order, like front to back or back to front, uh, depth first, breadth first, if you're dealing with trees or graphs, or uh, you know, skip every two elements, skip every three elements, you know, whatever. The iterator pattern allows you to define your own rules of how to traverse some collection of objects. So in this example, we're just going to create an iterator that traverses over an array. So let's jump into the code. And the first thing we're going to do is create our collection, which is our array. So we're going to say const items equals, we're just going to have an array of items. I'm going to have an array of mixed types. So I'm going to say, have a number, um, we can have a string, a Boolean and a float. So now that we have our collection, we can create our iterator. So let's say function iterator, and this is going to take in the collection we want to iterate over. So it's going to say items in this case, and then we're going to set this dot items equals items. We're going to store a reference to the collection that we want to iterate over. Okay. And we also need to store the index of our iterator where basically where we want to start in that collection in this case we're going to be iterating front to back so we set our index to equal zero so basically our iterator is going to be pointing here at first so now we need to create our methods for our iterator so let's say iterator dot prototype equals that okay and iterators the most critical there are two critical methods that an iterator must have um, the first is has next which is going to return true or false uh, depending on if the iterator uh, has any more elements in this collection so uh, we're gonna say has next function and we're gonna return this dot index less than this dot items dot length so if our index if the iterators index is still less than the number of items in the collection then we still have more elements we can process so we return true else if our index is out of bounds we return false we can't process any more elements um, so we're done with the has next and so the, the other method that is critical to iterators is the next method, which basically returns the next available element in our collection. So we're going to say next function. And we're, going, we're going to return this dot items at this dot index plus plus. So what this does, it returns it, it looks in the the our um, it looks in our collection and it says okay give me this index in our collection and then increase that index so the next time we call next we'll be looking at the next element um, and that's pretty much it for the the basic the most crucial parts of an iterator so if we go down here we can create a new instance of our iterator so const iter equals new iterator we're going to pass in our items array here and now let's just print out um iter dot next and see what we get so if we print that we should get one and now yep so we'll come up here 
We print it one, and now our iterator is now looking at the next element, DevSage. So if we were to call this again, let's say we copy pasted this, let's let's try this again. We get one and DevSage. And let's say we wanted to check to see if we have another element left. So if we do iter dot has next, and if we printed that, let, let's comment this other. Well, yeah. So let's let's just run this. So one dev sage and true. So we have another element in our array. So uh, let's let's try this. Let's delete what we have and let's say while iter dot has next. Um, console log iter dot next. So while we still have elements to process, process those elements. So let's run this. It should get all of our elements in our collection, which it did. Um, and yeah, that's 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 how an iterator works. It basically gives you a reference to the next available. Um, the next available element in that collection and like I said it doesn't have to be you, you can create your own rules in this case this is a forward iterator we're just iterating from front to back but we could say uh, we could come up here to our index and we can start at the last item and go backwards if we want to we can define our own rules so to do that we would say um, this dot index equals items dot length uh, minus one, I believe, right? And then we would um, come down here and we'd have to change our has next to say return uh, this dot index is greater than or equal to zero since we're going backwards. And then our dot net, our next would have to say, um, we would have to go down. We would have to decrease our index. So let's try to run this to see what it does. And look what it does. It prints all of our elements that we have, but, but now they're backwards. We started with one and then DevSage and then false, but now we have our 1.24 false DevSage, da da da. So yeah, this, this is the iterator pattern. It allows us to define our own rules of how we want to iterate over some collection of objects. If you like this video, leave a like. Um, I hope you have a better understanding of how an iterator works. Um, if you want more tutorials, I encourage you to subscribe. Just click that button down below. I'm trying to upload at least twice a week now. Um, but yeah, if you want to stay in touch, subscribe, leave a comment. And yeah, peace.